Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays. I'm your host, Paula Taylor, and this is episode 57. I want to start tonight by talking a little bit about last week's show and about our 21 Days of Sweetness Challenge. If you haven't joined us, it's not too late. Today was day seven, so you've still got two more weeks to jump on Facebook or Instagram and join in. And if you missed last week's episode, no worries. What we're doing is each day for 21 days, I am posting a moment of sweetness from my day and I'm encouraging you to share yours or just to share that you're practicing with us if you're not comfortable sharing your moment of sweetness. And I just wanted to say a little bit about how I feel this has benefited me. I'm at the end of the first week of doing this and I've been struggling a little bit. I've been struggling with some depression and it's probably apparent in my last few episodes. We did an episode on burnout. We did an episode on holding negativity in the body. And as I say, these episodes reflect kind of what I'm dealing with in my personal life. So this sweetness practice, this challenge, this 21 days of posting a moment of sweetness is really allowing me to see that sweetness in life, to experience it in, in different forms. I've I've deepened a few relationships and found sweetness in some relationships. I feel like this is a way to retrain the brain. We talk sometimes about those neural pathways. So if you've got neural pathways, like most of us do that are developed that maybe have that negative thought pattern with them, this is a way to retrain the brain to focus on the sweet. We can't get rid of the bitter. But if we spend some time practicing and focusing on the sweet, then even within that bitterness, we can find some sweetness and, and lighten our load a little bit, as it were. So tonight we're going to talk about tending your inner light. And this subject, this topic's been in my mind for several weeks, but it, I it was apparently waiting for the right moment. And yesterday morning I did a really interesting and powerful sound practice through the Shift Network. I had signed up for a sound healing virtual conference and I watched the first episode, not episode, the first thing <laughs> from the sound healing conference with a woman named Chloe Goodchild. And she has a, a practice she calls the Naked Voice. And, and so I'm gonna adapt two of the exercises she did while she was talking in her uh, presentation. And I think that's exactly what I was waiting for to present this topic. And originally I was gonna call it growing your inner light, but, but here's the thing, our inner light is our inner light. It's our divine light, our divine spark. Our inner light doesn't change. What changes is how that gets expressed. So, I use a lot of metaphor. Sometimes I wait until we get into the meditation to bring up a metaphor or something to visualize. And we're going to talk about this entire topic in terms of this metaphor tonight. And then it's going to carry on into the meditation and the sound practice. So I want to talk about our inner light as a lighthouse. And if you picture a lighthouse, a, a healthy lighthouse needs certain attributes. It needs a really strong foundation. It needs a strong, solid base. It needs a solid structure below the light to support that light at the top. And we spend a lot of time working on that structure, metaphorically, on the foundation of our lighthouse. We spend a lot of time working with core beliefs and and changing beliefs, changing neural pathways. We, we practice changing the foundation so that we have a solid foundation, so that we feel rooted and planted and grounded and connected to the earth. So that's the foundation. That's the bottom part of our lighthouse. But why do we do that? What's the point of that? And in this lighthouse metaphor, the foundation of the lighthouse, the actual structure of the lighthouse, the whole purpose of that is to support the light at the top, the beacon. And as I mentioned, nothing can hurt our light. Our light is divine. But 
as we encounter people and situations in our life, as our ego forms and develops and moves through life, the expression of that light tends to get affected. It tends to get dimmed. The glass in our lighthouse tends to get dirty. And so our expression of our light gets affected by a lot of different factors. And really, if you think about it, I could go on about this for a really long time. It's one of the reasons I decided to just stick with a metaphor to kind of rein myself in so I didn't end up talking for two hours about this light. And we may come back to this topic at another time. But essentially, we are indoctrinated from a very early age to hide or dim our light. We are taught to fit in to whatever society expects from us, whatever our family expects from us. We're taught to fit into a gender norm. So if you're a woman or if you express yourself as a woman, then you're told not to be too loud, not to be too bossy. If you're a man or you express yourself as a man, you're taught not to be too emotional. You're taught not to be too creative. And creativity is one of the, the things that fuels that light. So if you think about a healthy lighthouse, you need a solid foundation to hold your light at the top, but you need a bright light. The purpose of a lighthouse is to be seen, is, is as a beacon for ships, so ships know where to go. That's the purpose of an actual lighthouse. And so if your light isn't bright enough, if your light is dim because there's not enough fuel fueling your light, then the ships aren't going to see the light. If the windows around your lighthouse are dirty and the light can't be seen, then the ships aren't going to see your light. And what happens when your beacon can't be seen? What happens when a lighthouse light is not bright enough? There's a couple of different things that happen. So the ships coming into the shore actually crash. And they could even crash into the lighthouse and destroy the lighthouse. There's no, one of the reasons that we have a light shining from us is, is defense. The brighter our light is, the less likelihood a ship's going to come and crash into our lighthouse. But the other thing a lighthouse does is that it shows the ships where to go. It shows ships where not to go. It keeps the ships away, but it also directs the right ships to the right area. So in the same way our inner light does that, when our inner light is healthy and glowing and bright, then we attract what we need to us in our life. And most of us are afraid to let that light shine as brightly as it could. Most of us are afraid to be weird. We're afraid to stand out or we try to stand out, but only in a certain way. I am guilty of a lifetime of overachieving or, or being a perfectionist. And, and so, yes, I wanted to be seen desperately, but I didn't want to be seen for being weird or out there. I wanted to be seen for being perfect and wonderful and, and fitting into the box of whatever, whether it was music or academics or whatever situation I was in, I wanted to be the ideal box fitter in that situation. And that doesn't brighten your light. That actually dims your light. Trying to force your light into the wrong lighthouse absolutely dims your light. Everyone's lighthouse is different. Everyone's lighthouse sits on a different foundation. Everyone's lighthouse is painted a different color. Everyone's light and the, the actual room that your light is in, the glass might look different. The light itself is different. And that's what makes us so beautiful. That, would, that divine light is the same at its core. That energy is divine energy. But we're in this physical plane where we have multiple ways to express that light. And rather than celebrating that, we hide from it because there's so much power in that light. We hide from our own light. Other people try to get us to hide our light because it, it reflects to them that they're hiding their light. So they get triggered by that. And it's something that I want us to change. And I see a little bit of that shift that's happening of, of allowing kids, especially to be a little bit more themselves rather than 
us trying to force them into boxes. There's more gender fluidity. We are starting to embrace neurodiversity a little bit more. So, so I think we're headed maybe in the right direction, but those of us who grew up without that option, we can do this work now. We can do this work of tending our lighthouse. So, so your lighthouse needs maintenance. Right? Your lighthouse isn't just going to stand there and, and weather the test of time. Your lighthouse, your structure needs support. Sometimes it needs extra beams or stones or whatever it is to, to keep that base, that structure strong. The light itself needs maintenance. It needs fuel to continue. We need to connect to that divine source to fuel our light. And then we need to keep that way that we express our light we need to keep those windows clean so that our light can be seen so that we can be a beacon so when your light is bright you're attracting the ships that are meant to see you and this takes tending this takes practice and the other thing i want to say is that we have set up a world based around competition some people might call that a patriarchal model but we've set up a world where, where we're competing for resources, we're competing against each other. And so essentially in the metaphor, what does that mean? So my lighthouse is here and, and your lighthouse is there and someone else's lighthouse is there. And we've set ourselves up that, that we're competing, that we feel like our lights, I want my light to be seen. No, I want my light to be seen or I don't want my light to be seen. Let them see that light. We've set up this, situation this adversarial situation for each other and and rather than borrowing from each other's lighthouse hey i'm a little low on fuel this this month can i borrow from your lighthouse and and fuel my light we've sort of isolated ourselves and and we've set this up as like a you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps find your own fuel it's not my problem and we could be working together we could be sharing supplies Rather than trying to outshine each other, you know, we could be celebrating the differences in our lighthouses. And I had a really good conversation earlier this week with a friend where both of us kind of admitted that that the other one had an innate gift that that we were jealous of or that we were, you know, she has something that I don't have and I have something that she doesn't have. And we talked about how that had kind of driven us apart a little bit. It had it had fostered this feeling maybe of competition. And why wouldn't we work together? Why wouldn't I share my gift with her and she share her gift with me? Or or why wouldn't we celebrate our gifts? Because we all have gifts. The way that our light is expressed in this light Again, there's infinite ways and we have infinite gifts in this plane to allow our light to shine brightly. And we, most of us have just essentially been beaten down. You know, our light, we started with this beautiful light as children and, and then we had to fit into a mold and then we had to fit into a mold and pretty soon, you know, that lighthouse is dirty and, and we're almost out of fuel and, and maybe even the structure of our lighthouse is kind of crumbling and, and it's maybe tipped to the side. And so this spiritual work that we do is about reinforcing the structure of our lighthouse, that foundation, building a strong foundation. And we spend a lot of time doing that, as I said, but it's also about tending the top part of that lighthouse. It's about getting the courage to allow ourselves to shine and recognizing that that is going to trigger some people. When your light shines brightly, some, pe some ships are going to turn away from that. Some ships are going to launch their cannonballs at you, I guess. In, in this metaphor, we're going with an old timey metaphor. So it's not gonna matter if your structure is, is strong. If your structure is sound, the cannonballs are just gonna bounce right off. And, and getting away from the lighthouse metaphor a little bit, if your light is strong, the physical energetic light around your body, if your light is strong enough, then anything that comes into your light turns into that light. The best defense in terms of when things come in, when those ships come in that maybe are getting a little too close to the lighthouse or they're launching their cannonballs at your, at your lighthouse, 
The best defense is a bright light. Look at my light. This is not where you dock. You dock somewhere else. Allowing ourselves energetically to get big and bold and letting go of the fear around that. Letting go of the fear around growing our light, tending our light, allowing that light to shine, not hiding in the little window, like with a little bit of a, a place rubbed out where we can peek from behind and, and see if anyone's coming and, and maybe getting bombarded over and over again with those cannonballs or whatever or ships are hitting us and, and you know the lighthouse is barely standing. Like we build our foundation and we shine our light. And as we grow in that, as we tend our light and, and then we start to feel confident in that, then we have interactions like the one I had with my friend earlier this week where it's like, hey, I'm tending my light, you're tending your light. Let's let our lights shine together. Let's illuminate even more of this body of water in front of us by letting each of us shine our light in the way we were meant to and not looking at another light and going like, oh, that light's prettier than mine. That light's brighter than mine. That light has this or that. Really focusing on the fact that our unique light is that divine spark and the way that we express that is divine. <sighs> so tonight's meditation is going to be a weird one and a fun one and I, I ask you to keep an open mind because as I did these practices yesterday morning the first one they both really spoke to me but the first one instantly I was really into and you'll notice maybe I'm sitting further from the camera than I usually am. And that's because we're going to get loud tonight. So my advice, my encouragement to you is if you're in a place where you can do this fully, do this fully, get loud with this. If you're not, then you might find something, you might actually find a pillow and kind of do the sound part into a pillow because the important part of this tonight is, is we're going to draw from this solid foundation of our lighthouse that we've been building for 57 episodes now. We're going to draw from this foundation to fuel our light and we're going to blast our windows clean. And then we're going to speak our sacred name into this infinity that surrounds us. And, and that's the second part of this. So the second exercise that we're going to do, and we're going to do this in meditation. I'm, I'm going to kind of adapt this into the meditation tonight. We're going to speak our name. And we're going to keep speaking our name. And, and as we speak, we're going to draw the our name out almost into a chant. And when I heard this woman, Chloe, doing this, it sounded really weird to me. You know, she said, my name is Chloe. And then she was like, Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. And I was like a little bit like, I don't see the point of this. This is a little strange. Like it, and, and again, that's always a, that's always a good sign that, that it's something important when you get triggered when you're like oh I don't know about this this is a little this is a little stupid this is a little weird so I started doing it myself and and it was so profound so it may be that the actual practice of this is what is profound and so when you hear me doing it you might have the same response I did this sounds weird this sounds silly but stick with it because this is how we tend our light and I don't know how many times I've said and will say in the future, one of the things I love so much about sound is first of all, anyone can make sound. And this is, again, this is not about aesthetics, especially tonight. It, we're going to get loud and weird and it might even be a little bit yelly. And, and that's, that's this power. Sound has this power. When she was describing this first part of the exercise, she said, take a deep breath in and with one breath, on one breath out, make a sound like it's the last sound you're ever going to make in your life. And she was talking about as her father was dying, he was making these sounds and, and it was actually helping him transition out of this plane. So the power of sound 
You don't need any special instruments for sound. You don't need a beautiful operatic voice to make sound. You just need a voice box. You just need the mechanics to be able to produce the sound. So come into this with an open mind. Be as loud as you can be. Don't get the cops called on you, but if you can if you can really do this with power, you can use the power of, of your solar plexus as we're going to use to produce the sound. And again, you can kind of muffle the sound. That's going to sound really weird on the podcast. You can muffle the sound by, by putting your hands physically over your mouth. You can kind of use a pillow. If you're in an apartment or, you know, someplace where you're afraid you don't want to disturb your neighbors. But really let yourself do this. Let yourself go here. And let yourself recognize the sacredness of this practice of producing sound, the sacredness of saying your name and letting the sound of your name turn into this beautiful cascade of energy that travels out into this area around your lighthouse. This is when we get to that point, this will be a celebration of your light. We're going to fuel our light. We're going to blast those windows clean and then we're going to stand at the top of the lighthouse and speak our sacred name. And my feeling is that this is going to be a really powerful meditation. This is, I think, the biggest crystal grid I've ever made. It goes from like right where I am all the way past the the camera. It's, it's probably four feet long. I'm not sure. I'll take a video of it and post it tomorrow. But I think this is a really powerful practice and I'm a little bit stalling now because I'm a little bit scared about it because it feels really big. And, and again, this power is scary. The idea of shining your light for all to see is scary because not everybody's going to like it. Not everybody's going to respond well to it. Not everybody is going to recognize it as light and people are going to tell you that it's too much of something. When someone's telling you that you're too too much of something or not enough of something, that's a little bit of a clue that they're trying to get you to dim your light. And again, it's probably not conscious. It's probably a triggered response from something that that is in them that scares them about their own light. You know, seeing someone else just shining their light bright, it can be really scary because we can go there too. This is not something that only a few people can do. This is something that all of us can access if we just step out of our fear. And I'm going to do that now. So let's meditate together. (sighs) So sit up for this meditation, if at all possible. We want that power that comes with being in an upright position. Have some part of your body contacting the ground, whether it's your feet or you're sitting on the ground. Really let yourself be supported by the ground. And as we begin now, imagine that lighthouse already coming from the heart, the solar plexus area, and traveling down into the earth. You can see your lighthouse. You can see where your lighthouse is. Maybe it's on a rocky coastline, maybe it's more in a soft soil, maybe it's in a green area like you might find in Ireland or Scotland. Let yourself see the lighthouse from the very beginning here. And then take a few breaths as we always do. Deeply in through the nose, let your belly float out and then sigh it out with that audible ha sound. Ah, and let this be nice and courageous tonight. Breathing in courage as you breathe in and then sighing it out. Ah. And already starting to feel the power of that connection within your lighthouse, even if the fuel is low, even if the light is low, even if the windows are dirty, that solid foundation connects you to the ground, to the earth, and you can already feel that support. You're meant to be exactly where you are. Your lighthouse is meant to sit exactly where it sits in space. 
So really let yourself feel that. If there's any reinforcements that you need to make before we begin, let that happen effortlessly in the body of your lighthouse, in the foundation of your lighthouse. If there's any boards that need to be replaced, if you'd like to paint it a bolder color than it's been, start with the foundation here and really let this lighthouse be solid and beautiful in whatever way that calls to you intuitively. And now you're going to step into your lighthouse. You're going to start to kind of go up the stairs or whatever elevation. Maybe there's an elevator in there. Maybe you just float up. But now you're at the fuel source of your light. And we're going to fuel our light with sound here. And as I described before we began the meditation, you're going to take one really deep breath in and then on a single breath out, from this power of the solar plexus, of this body and foundation of your lighthouse, you're going to make a sound to fuel your light. And this sound can be anything that comes out of your mouth. Let go of judgment. I'm going to make my sound first and then I'll leave some space for you to make your sound. But recognize that your sound may sound nothing like my sound. And that's okay. Your sound is unique to you. So whatever comes out here, let it come out powerfully. Let yourself really take a deep breath into the belly and push that belly in as you make your sound. Let this be a really powerful sound. And again, if you need to muffle the sound, that's fine. You can use something to kind of place in front of your mouth. You may hear the speaker on my microphone. You may get a little crackle or a blare as I make my sound, don't let that distract you. Let that encourage you to be brave with making your sound. And we're going to fuel our light now with this sound. Ha! deep breath in, let your belly float out, and then powerfully release that sound to fuel your light. And we're going to do that once more, again, with this intention of fueling your light. Oh! Deep breath into the belly. Let that sound powerfully come through you. You're not even making this sound. The sound is coming through you. And then one more time, we're going to make this sound to fuel our light, to grow this light. Oh! As you release your sound, just sit for a moment. Let that vibration feel your light. See how bright this light has grown. Allow yourself to rise in whatever way you like to the light itself. And see how bright and beautiful this light is. See how happy it is to have been fed, to have been tended with the sound you just made. And notice now as you look around that your windows are probably dirty. Maybe they're just almost opaquely dirty. Maybe there's just a smudge here and there. We're going to use that same kind of sound to blast all of the dirt off those windows, just like you might power blast, power wash, sandblast a surface. We're going to use sound to blast all of that. So as you make these three sounds in your lighthouse, you may choose to face a different direction each time and allow this sound to blast 
this debris off of these windows that have been keeping your beautiful light contained, that have been making it appear to be dim, it's time to let that shine. So as you're ready, take a deep breath in. You can sound with me. I'll leave space for you to sound back to me. Whatever works for you, use your intuition here. Deep breath into the belly, release your sound, let it be powerful. Release any judgments that come up here about the sound, the quality of the sound, the volume of the sound. And as you're ready, face another portion of your windows. And let's do the same thing again. Deep breath into the belly. Let that sound come through you again. You're not even producing this sound. It's just coming straight from that light, from your soul, blasting these windows clean. And as you're ready, release any emotions that may come up here. Breathe deeply as you need to. Take an oxytocin breath and use that ha sound. This is a powerful practice. And so if things are coming up, be gentle with that. The power comes with that gentleness. We're blasting our windows clean, but we're doing it with love. We're gentle with ourselves. We're being tough on this flotsam that we've collected, this dirt that We've taken on about not letting ourselves show this light. So one last time, face whatever part of your lighthouse needs to be cleaned and release your sound. Oh! As you release your sound, take a nice deep oxytocin breath. You might feel some heat building in your body, fueling that light even further. Any last little areas of dirt or debris, if you'd like to make a sound to clear those, you can do that now. Allow the sound of this bowl to clear away any last areas. Let yourself see how clear this light house is, how clearly your light can be seen. Perhaps you travel out away from your lighthouse and look back on it and just see how beautiful it is. See what a beautiful beacon you've created. And as you're ready, let yourself stand anywhere or float anywhere you'd like in relation to your light. Maybe you're in the center of your light. Maybe you're in front or behind it. Maybe you're away from your lighthouse looking back in. We're going to speak our sacred name now. And as we did before, I'm going to do this and then I'll leave space for you to repeat it back to me. And again, use the power of your belly here, of this solar plexus, of your strong foundation of your lighthouse. And we're going to speak our name out. We're going to spread that light out. We're going to let this beacon shine 
through using this sacred sound of our name. So to begin, just say your name and say your name strongly with conviction. Paula. And then say it again and draw that out a little bit. Paula. And draw it out further. Paula. And you might find that this becomes a bit of a chant. Don't let that intimidate you. Just keep speaking. Don't let your mind go into singing mode. Paula. 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 Keep allowing your name, this sacred sound to lengthen. Paula. Paula. Allow this to lengthen out until you run out of breath. Paula. your hands on your belly and do this one more time really feeling the power that comes from this foundation Paula. breath in between each one of these and this time as you do this I want you to imagine this sacred sound wrapping all the way around your lighthouse from top to bottom from the light down to the foundation let this sacred sound cocoon your lighthouse in this light in this sacred love Paula. And then this time, I want you to imagine this sacred sound traveling out to all the other lighthouses around you, giving support and love and showing all these other lights that they can express themselves brightly, that they can let go of competition and fear and allow themselves to shine so brightly. Paula. some space for you to chant to speak your sacred name a few more times as you're ready 
If you'd like, you can allow it to lighten up now. Allow it to become loving and free. Let yourself speak your sacred name in whatever way calls to you. Remember that you can come back to this sacred practice anytime you'd like. Allow yourself to begin to wrap up. Finish with a beautiful, loving expression of your sacred name. Feel it in your heart space. Let it be light. Let it bring a smile to your face. Feel so connected here with the light, this divine light that you're ready to express fully to the world. Let this light be a beacon. Let this light attract all the beauty that you deserve in this life, and you do deserve it. Let yourself feel that now. Let yourself feel the strength and the power of this lighthouse, but also the beauty of the light itself, that bliss and joy that we work with so often. Let the heaviness of this practice spiral away now. And one more time, express your sacred name with love. so much softness and love come into this expression now. As you're ready, just sit for a moment. Let the reverberation of this practice fill your space. Tell your lighthouse that you'll be back to tend it. Reassure it that it will not become dilapidated. It will not become dirty again because you will tend your lighthouse as the keeper of your sacred light, your sacred flame, your divinity. Let yourself come back into the room you're sitting in. Feel the shift in the energy in this space, in your body, in your mind, your emotional state. Take another three deep oxytocin breaths. Really let yourself fill your belly and this time sigh this out with surrender. Surrender to the beauty of your light as a beacon for yourself and the world around you. <sighs> Recognize that this is a gentle power as much as it is a strong, forceful power. There's so much love in this power. There's no need to fear it. As you're ready, 
can slowly begin to move your body, maybe wiggle your toes and feet, move your head and neck around, wiggle your wrists, just slowly coming back to yourself here, coming back to the space you're in and affirm with me out loud, I am fully present in my body. I am fully present in my body and I allow my divine light to shine fully as a beacon. I am fully present in my body and I speak my sacred name and know it is heard with love. Let that love come into your physical body. Feel the sacredness of your name, of your being, of your expression of divine light in this physical lifetime. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for having the courage to practice this with me. Thank you for having the commitment to practice this for yourself and for the world. I see your beautiful light and I hear your sacred name and I rejoice in it. I celebrate it and I send you love. Have a beautiful rest of your evening and a joyous, sweet rest of your week. And I will see you next week for Wine Down Wednesday.